This video is brought to you by Skillshare. I learned a long time ago that there is something worse than missing the goal, and that's not pulling the trigger. Mia Ham. You've probably done some form of goal setting before. You've probably written down a smart goal at some point in your life, maybe to earn X amount of dollars by June 30th or to paint 30 watercolor paintings by the end of the year. But it's likely that at some point you forgot about your goals, or you got too busy to do your goals, or you just couldn't keep up with your goals consistently, and eventually you realized that just writing down a SMART goal isn't the answer to goal setting, or rather goal achieving, and that you probably need some kind of system to back you up that keeps you working on your goals. When I tell you that I think I have read just about every high quality article, book, listened to every podcast episode that there is about goal setting, I'm not kidding. This is a world that I have dived deep into. I think that I've tried just about every technique that there there is when it comes to goal setting, and some I've failed with, some I think are really bad pieces of advice, and some I found have helped me enormously. I definitely had a stage a few years ago where I thought that goal setting was for the elite. I thought it was this exclusive club that only people who were naturally really disciplined and really focused could do. Us normal people could not achieve goals. Over the years, I have learned so many things that have helped me to achieve the goals that I want, including doing things like like launching an app, launching a business, creating a YouTube channel, quitting my job, creating healthy habits like journaling and drinking water every day, little things and big things. And when it comes to achieving my goals, there's definitely a formula. There is a step-by-step -step process behind it that I apply pretty much every time that I want to bring something into my life. And in this video, I'm going to be diving deep on that formula, on that step-by-step. -step. I'm going to be walking you through the exact process that I use when it comes to not just planning, planning my goals because that's wonderful, but also achieving my goals and following through on my goals and being consistent with my goals. I'm going to take you through all of like the nitty gritty detail. This is a sit back, have a cup of tea kind of video. We're going to be taking a second to get through all this information. As I share my step-by-step -step goal setting process, I'm also going to be sharing you the resources that I've used along the way to help myself create this goal setting process, because this is honestly an amalgamation of years of learning from people who who are smarter than me, that have books, that have podcasts, the resources that I was talking about looking through before. I've taken all of the best stuff from those resources and I've turned it into this step-by-step -step process. So if you're in a place where you're like, yes, I want to start achieving my goals, maybe you've gotten over sort of that New Year's hump and you're hitting a bit of a motivation low and you want to deep dive on some extra resources, you're going to have a few after this video that you can look into. Step one of my goal setting process is to create an umbrella word. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I am a theme gal. I love a theme, whether it is a yearly theme or a quarterly theme. I love having something to focus my energy towards. This is actually something that I picked up from the Desire Map by Danielle Laporte. I read that probably five years ago now, and ever since, I've embraced it. It's this key to the goal setting process that most resources just don't address. Back in the day, I used to set really arbitrary goals. It's really easy to do you watch some videos on New Year's goal setting or resetting and you're like, okay, I need to set some goals. What will they be? I remember setting a goal on learning how to do eyeshadow better. I set a goal to run every day. I set a goal to read a book every week or read a hundred books a year, something along those lines. I've definitely set a goal to journal every day and there's nothing wrong with those goals per se. They're great goals, but I didn't have a why, a true why, because to be clear, it is very easy to come up with a post why, so setting a goal and then coming up with a why for it. But the far better way to approach it is to have a why, a theme, a focus, and then to come up with your goals. We do it backwards. We do it the wrong way around. In the words of Danielle Laporte, knowing how you actually want to feel is the most potent form of clarity that you can have. If your goals aren't synced with the substance of your heart, then achieving them won't matter much. For those of you who are more practical minded, and hearing things like synced with the substance of your heart it just makes you feel like eh. Choosing goals that are in alignment with how you want to feel is the most practical thing that you can do. Doing anything otherwise is the definition of impractical. You are wasting your time if you are picking external win kind of goals if they're not in alignment with you, if they don't feel right to you. Instead of picking your goals up front without doing any of the pre-work that I think is essential, start 
by picking an umbrella word as part of your pre-goal setting work. So your umbrella word is this word that captures how you want to feel. It captures the feelings that you want to embrace in your life, the way that you want to be, the person that you might want to become. Often I find that it's a word that embraces the opposite of how you feel right now. So if right now you are feeling stressed, you are feeling rushed, you are feeling busy, then your umbrella word could be ease, it could be calm, it could be flow. If right now you are feeling lonely, you feel like you don't have any friends, you feel like you can't remember your last meaningful conversation, conversation, your word could be connection. Kind of the opposite of whatever you're struggling with right now. That's not always the case, but it's often the case. I've actually talked about themes and how you might want to structure them in my video on how to create your best year ever in 2021, which is a video you might want to watch after this one. I'll have it linked up here and down below. You can create an umbrella word for your entire year, or you can choose to create an umbrella word for your quarter. Or if you really struggle with that commitment, you can try and create an umbrella word for for your month ahead. It matters a lot less how you structure it and a lot more how you focus on it and bring it into your life. Don't let yourself move forward with setting a goal until you have a really strong sense of understanding around how you feel right now and how you want to feel. Let yourself take some time, maybe journal on it, figure out where you're at right now and where you really want to be. You need a true sense of understanding around what you need right now before it makes sense to set a single goal. Step number two is to do some life clarifying activities. Like I've said, I don't think that you should be setting any goals until you have a really deep understanding of where you're at right now and what you really need. And doing some life clarifying journaling activities can be really helpful to get you a little closer to that. I find that these activities are like big brainstorming sessions and you come up with a whole bunch of things that you could potentially turn into goals and it gives you this sense of clarity and direction with where you're headed in your goal setting process. I'm going to quickly run you through three of my personal favorite activities to do. These are things that you could do right now, get out a notebook. And these are activities that I often revisit multiple times per year because I find them really helpful and really clarifying every time that I do them. Number one, the start and stop list. I love a start and stop list. Honestly, this is such a simple activity, but it's this really quick way to ask yourself what is currently serving me and what is not serving me. What do I want to start? What do I want to stop? I mind map my lists in my planner and it's really simple and really easy. All you need to do to do this activity is to set a timer for 30 minutes, open up a notepad with two blank pages side by side. At the top of one page, write down start. At the top of the next page, write down stop. And then make a big list of all of the things that you want to start and stop in your life. And then branch out to ways that you want to stop and start doing those things. Life clarifying activity number Number two is the anti-vision. This is a term that I've coined for an activity that has truly served me so well. I find this activity pretty emotional to do, but always, always motivating and clarifying. It's insightful and I honestly think it's life-changing and I don't say that lightly. Essentially, you're taking the activity of writing out this big, beautiful vision for your life and you're turning it into the least ideal vision for your life that you could imagine. Clearly, you could head in the direction of, well, everyone around me dies of sickness and my house burns down, but that's not what this is about. This exercise is more so writing down a vision of what your life will look like in three to five years time if you don't take any of the actions that you want to take, if you continue behaving in ways that are not serving you. If you continue to live your days out the exact way that they are and you don't pursue your goals. What I usually do after that activity is I turn it around and I decide how I can prevent that vision from coming to life. The third life clarifying activity is the perfect day exercise. Take that feeling that you want to embrace, that umbrella word, and turn it into this version of your perfect day. You're writing out a story from start to end of how your day kicks off to how you feel when you go to sleep. What does your life look like? What are the little things that you're getting up to in your day look like? How are you working? What are you working on? In my Skillshare class, I actually have a whole bunch of these life clarifying activities alongside worksheets that you can download in order to help 
you to do them. I really walk you through step by step of each exercise and I give you a ton of examples that can help you to embrace these exercises in your life. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. It has classes on things like self-care and productivity, but it also has classes on things like working with InDesign, Photoshop, taking photos, using Illustrator, doing watercolor. There are so many classes available. I've recently been working my way through Mimi Chow's course on Skillshare. It's focused on mindful growth and the creative journey. Find your spark and map your future. Her workbook is so beautiful and it's really the perfect class for this time of year when we've reached a new quarter. These are a whole bunch of pretty much life clarifying activities that will help you to move in the direction of what goals you want to set. I really liked the face your fears exercise. It was really in alignment with how I want to interact with my fears by naming them, treating them with care, finding the underlying story and then reframing. Accomplishing growth is really satisfying and Skillshare classes make that possible. Skillshare is curated specifically for learnings. There are no ads. They are always launching new premium classes that you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it is less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. In the words of Emile Chartier, nothing is more dangerous than an idea when it's the only one that you have. And the best way to get a good idea is to come up with lots of ideas. That's definitely another quote. Those aren't my words. Brainstorming goals is one of my favorite parts of the goal setting process. Coming up with a whole ton of ideas that are in alignment with that umbrella word, with the feelings that you want to embrace. It's a really exciting activity. There are so many questions that you can use to help you to brainstorm the goals that you want to set, but I'm going to give you a few, and these are straight from the Life Map Collective Instagram, if not the Life Map Collective planner as well. Firstly, what are you avoiding? Literally, what have you been avoiding? What is something that you know that you should have done that you have not done? Often what we're avoiding the most is what we most need to do, and it could be doing something that scares you, like starting a social media platform, or it could be just getting something done that is going to have a huge impact on your life, like setting up an investment fund. Another question to help with your brainstorm is what makes you feel good? If meditation makes you feel really good, is it something that you should be doing more regularly? If regularly journaling gives you a sense of clarity and direction, is it something that you should be doing on a daily basis? And another brainstorming question that I absolutely love. This is from The One Thing by Gary Keller, which is a great book to read if you're in a goal setting frame of mind. What goals could you accomplish that having accomplished them will make everything else easier or unnecessary? Over time, although it doesn't explicitly say it in this book, I've realized that for the most part, the answers to this question will be related to either time, money, or energy. These are domino goals that will either create more time in your life, allowing you to work on other goals and making them easier or unnecessary. The domino goals that will give you more money in your life so that you can throw money at your other goals and make them easier or unnecessary. Or these are goals related to creating more energy in your life so that you have more energy to do other things. The next step in my goal setting system is deciding. I only want to hit my targets if the aiming and the hitting feel good. Danielle Laporte. I found that quote when I was researching for this video and I was like, that is so applicable. No one wants to decide on their goals. No one wants to pick a goal out of all of the goals that they're brainstormed. We want to take on all of them. And that is where a lot of people fail. That's where I've definitely failed in the past. The structure that I follow for goal setting is having one most important goal. This is the goal that if it was the only thing that you achieved, you would be pretty content with it. And then having two mini goals and that's it at one given time. And to make sure that you don't get bored of having the same goals all year, change those goals up every quarter or every 13 weeks. You can set dates in your calendar for when you want to change them up. I like to give myself 13 weeks and there are good reasons for it. The two big benefits of quarterly or 13 week goals that make me swear by them are firstly, they are short term so you are more motivated. I am convinced that there's something magical about three months or 13 weeks. It's just the perfect amount of time to keep you motivated and it doesn't go so over time that you're like, eh, I can't be bothered with these goals anymore. Secondly, they allow you to be flexible and flexibility 
is super important when it comes to goal setting in a way that keeps you motivated. At the start of the year, there are probably so many things that you want to do that when you reach the end of the year, you couldn't give a toss about, like you could not care less about them. January 1st, you might be convinced that keto is the answer. And then by December, you could have realized that intuitive eating is really where it's at. You don't know who you're going to be in December and you shouldn't be planning for who you're going to be in December. And that's why I prefer 13 week or quarterly goal setting. When I decide on my goals, there are a few questions that I ask. Firstly, how excited am I to work on this goal? My most important goal always needs to score high on the super exciting scale. Otherwise, it's just not something that I'm going to do. If it doesn't feel in alignment, if it doesn't feel like something that I'm pumped about, then I'm not going to do it. If there's a goal that's like essential that you just have to do and it's not exciting, but you know it'll be so impactful, make it a mini goal. Don't make it a most important goal because otherwise it'll just be a drag. I ask myself how doable my goals are as in realistically, if I put in the effort, would I be able to achieve them? This is sort of tapping into smart goals here. We're making sure that what you're doing is actually achievable. And you're not setting your sights ridiculously high to the point where you will fail and then you will feel disheartened. How impactful is this goal? If a goal does not impact your life in three years time, it shouldn't be a goal that you are putting all of your focus towards. And how challenged do you feel by your goal? It's important to measure this because you could find that if something is too challenging, you need to chunk it down. You need to make it smaller. And challenging is a bit subjective. It's not the same as doable because the example that I like to give in my dream map sessions that I do with the life map community occasionally is showing up to a public speaking class once a week 6 p.m. on a Wednesday might be highly doable. Like, yes, you can drive 10 minutes and show up to that meeting every single week, but it could also be insanely challenging if you have a deep-rooted fear of public speaking. I usually measure all of those questions from 1 to 10, and that helps to guide me in which goals that I want to set. I also wanted to let you know that everything that I'm talking about in this video is embraced in my life map planner. Once you have decided on your goal, your next step is to create create an outcome vision. This is where you get highly specific about exactly what you want your outcome to look like. If you had a bunch of money there to buy a house, you were ready to make that purchase, there's not a chance that you would just hand that money over to a realtor and be like, yep, I'm ready to buy a house with no indication of what you actually wanted. The same amount of money can get you very different things. Half a million dollars might get you a small unit that's closer to the beach, but it could also get you a house with a backyard that's a little bit farther away. Much like you wouldn't hand house buying off to someone without giving them a really clear idea of exactly what you wanted, you shouldn't be setting off to achieve your goals unless you have a really clear idea of exactly what you want. There are so many different pathways to a goal and there are so many different ways that a goal can actually look. And going back to Danielle's quote, what outcome is going to feel the best? Your outcome is really important, but it's also not what you should always be focusing on. By all means, create a really clear vision for what you want. But from there, I would actually detach myself from the outcome and move your focus a lot more towards the process of achieving your goal. And this is something that you can outline as well. There was a race car team and they wanted to increase the speed that the pit crew could do things like change the tires, the fuel, all of that kind of stuff. And at first they were like, okay, we're just going to measure your time time and we want you to improve your time. Their whole thing was focus on the speed, focus on the outcome. But when the pit members were told instead that they would be evaluated based on style, they were actually told to think the word smooth. So just think smooth as you are changing those tires. They found that their times, their speeds went up a lot more than when they were told to just focus on the speed. Similar to this, sales reps who are told to focus on customer satisfaction and not the end outcome of the sale tend to perform better. So absolutely outline your outcome, get really clear on your vision, exactly what it is that you want. Then go ahead, detach yourself from that outcome and focus on the process. Focus on how you want to feel as you are achieving your goal. Outline the more present moment focused activities that you want to focus on. The next step in my goal setting system is creating a plan. You've done a whole lot of pre-work. You've decided on your goals. A lot of people stop there and they don't actually go ahead and make a plan 
to follow through. A quote that I often go back to is, what looks like resistance is often a lack of clarity. Dan and Chip Heath, your gal loves a quote. So often I've thought of myself as demotivated. I've been like, oh my gosh, why am I so lazy? Like I can't get things done when really what I was struggling with was just a serious lack of clarity around what I needed to do next. I didn't know the step-by-step -step actions that I needed to take. I didn't know the next step forward. I felt a whole bunch of resistance in my body and I just stopped taking action. And keep in mind when it comes to your goals, you need to be constantly seeking clarity. This isn't a one-time thing. You could kick off your goal and you could start working on your new business every single night and it might take you a week to realize, wow, that schedule does not work for you because at night you're fuzzy brained and then you need to go back and re-clarify your plan. If you're not constantly re-clarifying your plan, re-clarifying your next actions, you're going to stop taking any actions. When you're creating a plan for your goals, you want to map out firstly the habits that will help you to bring your goals to life. If you want to write a book, go for a daily habit of writing a page. If you want to be healthy, go for a daily habit of opening up the Fit On app and doing an exercise. On top of planning out the habits that you're going to embrace to achieve your goals, you want to look at the next action steps. So starting a coaching business would turn into action steps like research coaching academies, follow coaches on Instagram, sign up to Squarespace to get a website, etc, etc. When it comes to action steps, I think a lot of people, and this is myself in the past as well, go ahead and map out like every single thing that you could do to get you from A to B, to get you from the start of your goal to the end of your goal. And that can be like hundreds of action steps. Then you go ahead, you organize them, you categorize them, maybe you put them all on a timeline. What you'll find is that you'll get like a month into your goal setting process and you'll be like, Ugh, none of that feels connected to me because I did that plan so long ago. You create this really detailed plan that you feel really connected with when you first create it and then time goes by and you just feel detached from it. You feel disconnected. Time creates fuzziness and that leads you to avoiding all of the plans that you made. And this is why I find it a lot more helpful to create a really high level plan when I'm doing any kind of project goal, whether it be launching a business, launching an app, and planning your actual step-by-step -step actions either every week or every month depending on what vibes more with you. Doing this can also help you to avoid over planning, which is something that a lot of people that set goals do. They just want to do the planning. They don't want to do the doing. I'm not calling anyone out here. You can spend all of the time in the world getting your Notion page perfect, mapping out every single possible action that you could need to take in order to achieve your goals, but usually it's not awfully helpful. What you really need to get clarity on is the exact next steps that you need to take, not every single step that you need to take. Remember that the point of a plan is to be helpful. That's literally what it exists to do. If it is no longer helpful, you need to rethink how you do it. Plan until you feel clarity then stop planning, revisit that plan later when you need more clarity and build on it from now. The last step in this goal setting system is all about staying consistent and the habits that you need to implement in order to stay consistent with your goals. Staying focused on them, not forgetting them, not getting too busy and then just dropping them completely. There are three big things that have helped me to stay consistent with my goals. Staying consistent is where most people do fall off. Creating the plan, getting inspired, creating clarity around how you want to feel, those things are easy to sort of knock out in a day to a week, but taking action even after two months has passed from you creating your original plan, that is definitely the hard part. There are three things that I've embraced that have helped me to consistently stay consistent when it comes to my goals. The first thing is an accountability partner. Without having someone who is also invested in me achieving my goals, I don't think I would have achieved my goals. You can pay for an accountability partner on a platform like coach.me or you can join a community like the life map community and find a life map accountability partner go into a local business group and post looking for someone else who also wants an accountability partner there are so many avenues that you can take to find someone you meet once a week you check how your goals are tracking and you do a weekly check-in together this is the second essential thing that you need for consistency something that i've heard from people who have used the life map planner which is my goal planner that really guides you through this whole goal setting process step by step 
is that when they do the reflection portion of their weekly check-in, which is basically just asking themselves, how did I go in the last week and how could I improve? They tend to focus on things like, well, I just need more discipline. I just need more focus. If I just tried harder, I'd be able to do better. Over time, I've come to realize that that kind of reflection is useless reflection. A quote by Brian Resnick that I love around this is, focusing on failures of willpower leads to shame, both public and private, and holds back our curiosity from finding and enacting solutions that actually work. A weekly check-in should be a time of self-compassionate curiosity. That's it. A time of, hmm, I wonder why this isn't working. How might I improve? What are some things that I could do differently? Is there something that's holding me back from doing this? Am I approaching it in the wrong way? In the book, A More Beautiful Question by Warren Berger, which is one of the book guides in my app, Intention, they talk about this scenario where a business professor designed a simple visual exercise. It was a table of squares alongside the question, how many squares are there? And the answers could range from 30 to 60 to infinity. And that exercise was used to illustrate the point that we often don't see all the possibilities that are available to us because we simply don't look enough. This exercise particularly resonates with people who are in difficult situations situations because they can always think there's always another square or another possibility. You just need to keep on looking for it. As James Clear says, successes are just to revise mistakes. And that's one of the portions of the weekly check-in to reflect on where you might have not gone as well as you wanted to, and to think about how you can change things up for the week ahead. The key thing that I talk about when it comes to goal setting is experimentation. I think that's what everyone throws out the window. They forget that experimentation is essential when it comes to goal setting. And if you don't go at it with an experimenter's mindset, you're going to give up quickly. Practice experimentation in your weekly check-in with a self-compassionate, curious mindset. Then there is daily or weekly planning with your goals in mind. And that end bar, that's what people forget. A lot of people do planning for their weeks and they do planning for their days, but they don't actually have their goals at the top of their mind when they're doing that planning. If you aren't planning out your week with to-dos related to your goals, time blocking with chunks of time down dedicated to working on your goals, they aren't going to get done. When I plan my week in my planner, I'm writing down to-dos directly related to my most important goal and to-dos that are directly related to my mini goals. When I plan my days, I actually write down my goals every single day. Like I am burning those goals into my brain so that I cannot forget them. That is my step-by-step goal setting process that if I follow, turns into me achieving my goals. This is something that I've applied consistently. I've applied it pretty methodically. I've turned it into a whole system because I believe in it so much. Take the things that resonate with you. You can always leave the things that don't resonate with you. Everyone is different. If you liked this video, you're probably going to like my whole playlist that I have all focused around goal setting. This video actually has captured a lot of things that I might have talked about before, but I've kind of put it all into one video and I feel exhausted after talking about it all, to be honest. This is going to be a long video. If you're feeling inspired, you want to set your goals now and you want to get direction on how to best follow through on them. I'll have that playlist on the screen down below. I appreciate you so very much and I will see you soon.